What's up? What's up, guys? Today, I want to break down C.J. Stroud, who I have as my quarterback four currently. That could move. He could be quarterback three. Uh, There's one guy I'm trying to get some more tape on before I really solidify my grade. But all I know is I've got a late, late first round grade on this dude. If that, um, I think C.J. Stroud will be a good game manager, but very little more than that, if any more than that ever. Too long, don't want to stick around for the rest of the video. Fine. Hit like, and I'll tell you the lowdown. My comp for him is Teddy Bridgewater, and I think it's a pretty good comp. Uh, another really good comp I've heard is Jared Goff, but a little bit more mobile, which I personally think is the same thing as Teddy Bridgewater before his knee fell apart. Uh, I think his ceiling is that he could be Joe Burrow, but remember, I'm not as high on Joe Burrow as a lot of people are. You want to see some examples of why? Here's a card to a video where I break down every play in one of Joe Burrow's games and kind of show you what I don't love about his game, why I don't think he's the elite dude a lot of people think he is. Uh, And his floor, I think there's a real chance that C.J. Stroud could be a Zach Wilson type. Uh, It wouldn't be the first time we've seen an Ohio State quarterback put up awesome numbers and then totally implode in the NFL. But, you know, beyond helmet scouting, I see a lot of the same flaws in Stroud as I do in Wilson mentally. It's not about arm talent. They're pretty different as arm talents, but just the way that they handle pressure and they handle tight windows and when the game gets really quick down in the red zone. Without further ado, let's get to the actual traits and then the accuracy zones uh, that I graded from CJ Stroud when watching his film this year. The first trait I want to talk about is range. Range is really important. It's basically arm power. Uh, It's just how far a quarterback can throw the football, which is not the most important part of his arm strength, but it's a big one. You don't need too many clips to see arm strength, right? This here is going to be a 45-yard downfield throw, 55 yards from the point of launch, and that's pretty good. It's not great, but I give it a B-plus as far as uh, range goes. That is an above-average starting NFL quarterback's ability to throw the ball far. You'll see he can throw the ball about 30 yards with pretty you know, pretty relative ease, but he's never going to be a power thrower. He's never going to be a Josh Allen hitting 70-yard streaks. That's just not who he is. Next, I want to talk about velocity, the other component of arm strength, because while C.J. Stroud can drive the ball a little bit, it's not really his forte either. On the first throw there, you can see that he can drive the ball accurately into a fairly tight window, but on this second play, right here, you're going to see a speed out to Marvin Harrison Jr. right around the 20-yard line marker. And you can see that he has to stop and wait for the ball. It's a little slow. The timing's not great, and the velocity doesn't make up for it. That being said, one thing C.J. Stroud really does have, as you'll see on this play, is incredible touch. You can see him just lay the ball gently into that three-man coverage with great accuracy. His feathery touch makes the ball really easy for his receivers to catch. There's another beautiful dime in the bucket, lands on the hands gently, easy to catch. Not one of these, you know, knuckle breakers like Brett Favre famously used to throw. So I give him a B on velocity. I give him an A minus on touch. You combine those. I give him a B plus on his velocity control generally because having great zip like on this throw is just about as important as having good touch like on prior throws. So CJ Stroud is known as a ball placement specialist. That's what he said at the combine. And you'll see on these first few throws, yeah, he's really accurate, but a lot of these throws are wide the hell open. Like, who's not going to miss curls and comebacks that have nobody within a 10-yard radius of the receiver? You'll even see here, this is a wide open slant, right? It's not an RPO, but it functions just like one. And he misses this. Now, you could argue he's trying to protect his receiver, but from what? There's nobody over here. Just lead your dude and get the yards. I don't think that that was intentional. I think that he just missed. And so even on these really easy routes, he's not perfect with his placement. But who is, right? The great quarterbacks are accurate 70-80% of the time. Not completing, but accurate. By the way, RPOs, he runs a lot of these. RPOs are wide open throws. They are not tight window throws. They're super easy. Now, one thing we see a lot with C.J. Stroud is that he's, you could argue that he is intentionally putting the ball behind his receiver to protect him from an incoming defender, right? Like sitting him down in coverage, something like that, changing his momentum to protect the receiver. But right here, you can see this safety is 10 yards deeper and about mm, three yards to the inside. 
that's a lot of room to lead your receiver through this triangle, through this corridor, lead him out the other side, let him get yards after the catch. He puts it on the back shoulder, and I don't think that's intentional. And if it is, that's absolute cowardice, and he's going to never be able to throw in the NFL because the windows only get tighter than that. On this deep ball, you can see maybe he was being safe and trying to make sure that he got the catch rather than leading his wide-open receiver for an easy touchdown, but maybe, just maybe, he missed. <laughs> now, you, again, wide open players make his accuracy easier, and this is why Justin Fields at Ohio State had elite accuracy numbers according to PFF. It wasn't that he was actually that accurate, it was more that things are just really easy. Now here, this pass I think is brilliant, and this is one of the best examples of his ball placement. We've got a 40-yard throw to the end zone. And yes, this is Marvin Harrison Jr. He's very tall. He's very fast. He's stretched out. He can't catch it. If he can't, nobody can. But this is properly utilizing outside leverage to give your receiver the best chance at that ball. I think that's an elite throw, and he has some of those. However, especially in the red zone, we see that he gets wild. Now, this isn't in the red zone, and we'll get to the red zone stuff later. But basically, his ball placement has a tendency to get wacky when he's under pressure or when things are moving quickly. So when he's in tight. And in the NFL, you're going to be under pressure all the time, and you're going to be in tight because the red zone in college is about as fast and the windows are about as tight as everything on the field is at the next level. It's not that he's got bad ball placement, and there you see he just puts it behind his receiver. It's more that it's not as elite as you would expect from somebody who is supposed to be special at this. If you're drafting this guy first overall, and let's face it, he's going first overall, you want ball placement to be impeccable. And I think that his ball placement's an A-. minus. It's really good. But his precision, I only give a B, B+, plus because it's not always there, and it goes away quickly when things get tough. A lot of these balls are being completed, but the placement's not quite perfect. It's a little bit inside, it's a little bit high, and the receiver makes an adjustment. But overall, I think C.J. Stroud is a very accurate passer who lacks consistency and, and really struggles when the shit hits the fan. That brings us to our next topic, pocket awareness, pocket IQ. And I think he really struggles there. I'm going to try to be quick on this section, but it's really important because I give CJ Stroud's pocket awareness a D, and that is easily the worst facet of his game. So I think it needs to be explained why. On this play, you can see perfectly clean pocket, but a looping defender comes on a, a blitz. He's five yards away, and CJ Stroud is already throwing a fadeaway jumper way too high for his tight end. You can see that his accuracy, which is his, that's his bread and butter, it falls off a cliff when he is forced to think quickly because he's under pressure. So it's not that he's unaware in the pocket, like he's just taking all these terrible sacks, although he does right here. It's usually that he's afraid of getting hit, he panics, and he doesn't process or throw properly because he's just, he's particularly afraid of getting hit. Now, I'm afraid of getting hit, but I'm not your NFL quarterback. So here he shows, like, even when he does make a good pocket move, and he's a very nimble athlete, he can manipulate the pocket. Even when he makes the good move, he then throws a pick into triple coverage. Right, right here, this is in a game where he's been hit a few times against Michigan already, and you can see you've got a wide open streak down the left sideline. That's a really tough throw, I get it. But you've got this post corner that is coming wide open on your side of the field, much more manageable, only about a 50-yard throw. It should be within your range, and instead he checks it down because there's one dude who starts to break the line of scrimmage. It's a consistent issue with him whenever, it's not when he's pressured, it's when he's almost beginning to be pressured, that he starts panicking, throwing the ball up, making bad decisions, or just letting his mechanics get sloppy and failing to live up to the standard of ball placement that he has set for himself. And when that's your bread and butter, you can't lose it the second things get tough, the second windows get short and quick, the second pressure starts to hit you. So it's not that C.J. Stroud takes a ton of sacks. It's not that he's oblivious to pressure. It's that he's almost too sensitive to it. Again, here, a, make, a great playmaking play, and then just a terrible decision with really bad accuracy to follow it up. It's not that C.J. Stroud can't handle the pressure physically. It's not that he doesn't notice it. It's that when he notices it, he panics. It's like those commercials, have a Snickers, you're hungry, because somebody, like, they're hungry and they turn into an old man and they're grumpy. Well, when he is 
scared of pressure, he gets grumpy. And by grumpy, I mean terrible. I'm not going to spend a lot of time dwelling upon it. CJ Stroud's really mobile. He's not a runner. He doesn't like to run. He thinks the game like a pocket passer, but he has the ability to run pretty damn well. Think a lot like Aaron Rodgers' mobility, right? When he was younger, he was not a runner. He never, you don't want him running an RPO, but he can pick up 10, 20 yards with his legs pretty easily. CJ Stroud's a fairly fast player, and he's clearly very fluid and nimble as an athlete. I think that CJ Stroud's a great pre-snap processor and not so much afterwards. If you want to check out more on why I think that this first play is bad, look at the card above you. I think it's really indicative of his play in general, and I'm going to do a whole separate video on it. Now, this play right here is going to be a completion, and it looks pretty good, but you'll actually notice that it's a missed high-low read. So this is like the hallmark of Ohio State's offense. It's why they've been getting such incredible production out of so many bad NFL quarterbacks for a decade now. Basically, it's a scissor concept with this receiver running an in route like this, and this receiver over the top running a corner route over the top. C.J. Stroud kind of panics. Now, he's not thinking very well. He sees the first open receiver, and he throws it. If he were to have just looked over the top and seen there was no safety taking the top off, or, you know, guarding the top off this defense, this deeper receiver is wide open. So that's not even necessarily that he's not finding open receivers. It's that he's not being very aggressive, and he's not thinking all the way through the play. Here we can see that when C.J. Stroud gets even a little bit off timing, he gets really reckless and lobs the ball into triple coverage, and again, rolls out to the right, things aren't clean, and just guns the ball at his guy. I think that C.J. Stroud's processing really comes into play when he's in the red zone. You'll see that on these red zone snaps I'm showing you, he's really inaccurate, like surprisingly so, and he makes terrible decisions. Like here, he makes an awesome play to get outside the pocket and extend it, and then throws a should-be pick. I think it's because when you're in the red zone in college, everything tightens up. The zones are smaller, the windows are much tighter, and you have to think faster. And when forced to think quickly, CJ Stroud fails massively. My worry isn't that C.J. Stroud is going to be bad in the red zone in the NFL. The issue is that the red zone in college is about as fast and the windows are about as tight as the entire field is in the NFL. So if C.J. Stroud's struggling with this area of the field in college, it indicates to me that he might struggle with the entire field at the NFL level. We see this with Zach Wilson. He was really not so good and made a lot of panicky decisions in the red zone or under pressure when he was at BYU. And... If C.J. Stroud is displaying the same mental habits, shall we say, as a guy who ruined his career two years in because he just couldn't hack it from a mental standpoint, we could be looking at a total bust here. Now, I don't think it's that bad, and I think that C.J. Stroud is good enough pre-snap that when things are clear and when he's in structure, he'll really be able to handle it, the NFL. He'll really be able to handle the NFL. But if I'm wrong... And if he needs things to be simple, slow, and spaced out, we could be looking at another Zach Wilson, another Dwayne Haskins. The final trait I want to talk about before we get to accuracy zones is C.J. Stroud's ability as a playmaker. His ability to create outside structure, move around in the pocket, and you know do those off-platform throws that people love so much. The thing that basically got Zach Wilson drafted high uh, a few years ago. Now... C.J. Stroud, I gave a B- minus on playmaking, not so much because of what he's done, but what he could do. As you can see here, he's a really agile athlete. He's a good mover. I see a lot of Aaron Rodgers in his movement ability, as we've already gone over. The problem is that he very rarely actually plays good football after making those movements. So on this particular play against Notre Dame, you'll see he pulls the ball down, he surveys the field, he gets to his second and third read, and then he gets sloppy with his mechanics, leading to a really inaccurate throw. Here against Michigan, when he's forced to move, he actually makes a really good play, but the ball's not quite as well-placed as typical. When he's forced to think outside the box and manipulate the play after the play has already happened, he often gets really reckless and does things like this, where he just throws the ball into a crowd, and he'll get away with that in college, but at the next level, those kinds of balls are going to go the other way. Now, again, right here, we see against Georgia, really excellent pocket maneuvering. And in this Georgia game, he had some really impressive plays, you know, creating outside the structure of the actual play. Despite the fact that C.J. Stroud made some really great plays outside of structure in the Georgia game, I think that it's a little bit misleading. 
Here we see he makes a really nice play and then throws a good curl down the field about 15 yards. This is a solid play, and it's, the, in fact, the only one that I think is sustainable. Why? Because that's the only one of these entire video uh, full of clips that is not going to go to Marvin Harrison Jr. Here, really good job extending the play, and Marvin Harrison Jr. does an incredible job to beat the crap out of his man. Let's watch it one more time from the start. Watch Marvin Harrison Jr. coming out of the slot. He wins on his deep slant, or more of a post. He wins on the double move, and then he wins when he comes back across, turning it into an over route. That's great, but how sustainable is it to just run away from defenders and throw in the general direction of Marvin Harrison Jr.? This is a great play, but... As this video goes on, you'll see that the precision and the decision-making get a little bit worse every time. Here, another really good play. Breaking tackles, eluding would-be tacklers, getting outside the pocket, resetting his feet, and flicking the ball generally toward Marvin Harrison Jr., who uses his incredible play strength to shuck his defender and get down, making an excellent catch on a poorly thrown ball. Again, this is a great play by C.J. Stroud, but how sustainable is it for him to produce these awesome plays on the move after the play is broken down when it requires a great catch from his receiver and excellent trust in his receiver and his receiver just generally mossing a dude? Now, here is another example outside of structure. Same game against Georgia. Terrible throw. If this throw is online and leads Marvin Harrison Jr., it's an easy touchdown. Just put that ball right about where this mouse is, inside leverage, upfield. Instead, it's behind him and it's short, and that should be a pick if Keely Ringo doesn't DPI. And finally, and this is the biggest issue I have with this style of playmaking that C.J. Stroud exhibited against Georgia and why I don't think it's sustainable at all. Like every other time, he panics and throws the ball in the air generally toward Marvin Harrison Jr., and this time, it gets him killed. You can see as Stroud throws the ball up, it's in between two defenders, one of which, this guy here, is going to just take Marvin Harrison's head off. And why does that matter? Well, aside from getting your teammate hurt... You can see here that Marvin Harrison Jr. was crucial to C.J. Stroud's success. In fact, before Marvin Harrison Jr. got hurt, C.J. Stroud had an A-plus game in the works, one of the best games I've ever graded. Once Marvin Harrison Jr. got hurt, the 16 remaining plays were D-minus, arguably F football. So it goes to show that not only was C.J. Stroud relying on Marvin Harrison Jr. as a safety blanket, basically just chucking it up to him whenever he felt any kind of pressure or didn't feel comfortable, but also that he was relying on him for his production and even to some extent his performance. If you're that heavily reliant on one incredibly dominant receiver, it's not encouraging for what's going to happen when you get to the next level. And nobody in the NFL, even the best receivers in the NFL, aren't as dominant against NFL defenders as Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be against college corners. I'm not going to waste a ton of time showing you clips. CJ Stroud's really accurate to the short routes, right? A minus. I mean, yeah, he'll float a couple inexplicably, but he's about as accurate as you're going to want on those short plays. I'm much more interested in C.J. Stroud's deep ball, because while throws like this are elite with great placement, leading him outside, even though it's not quite catchable, I think that that's really good throw. And this one, 30 yards right over the defender's head, a dot. I think that a lot of his deep production gets inflated. So if you look at C.J. Stroud 20-plus yard throws, he's probably got awesome stats. I'm not going to check. However, on this play, Chris Olave at the bottom of the screen, yes, NFL stud Chris Olave, cooks his defender at about the 35-yard line. By the 40-yard line, it's already over. CJ Stroud's going to put this ball at the 50, and it should be at the other 40. Now, let me show you why. As soon as I hit play, you're going to see that Olave starts to slow down and comes almost to a complete stop before jumping, doing a pirouette, and mossing this defender to catch the ball. Now, that's dope. It's an awesome gain, and Olave has a lot to do with that. But that's not necessarily sustainable at the next level, where the defenders are that much better and the receivers don't have these incredible advantages that they do over college corners. See it one more time. It's a really good catch by Olave. He's a ball winner. Here we also see that sometimes Stroud's ball placement goes to hell when he's throwing deep. He puts that ball behind his receiver, and he throws a lot of jump balls. 
I see a lot of Joe Burrow in him, but without the aggression and the two twin tower elite wide receivers that win balls, uh, you know, that shouldn't necessarily be won. I don't think that his deep ball is very good, but I also don't think it's bad. I give him a B on his deep ball, which is about NFL starter average. I think that you'll find 15 starters with better deep balls likely and 15 starters with worse ones. When it comes to mid-tier accuracy, which is that area behind the linebackers and above the safeties, I think CJ Stroud's also average. And you'll see he's completing a lot of these balls, but it's mostly because they're wide open windows. In order to attack these really, really tight windows at the next level, because they are the tightest of windows at the next level, you need either really good anticipation or really, really good zip on your ball. And I think that we've already established CJ Stroud has good, not great zip, and we've already established that he's got okay anticipation it's difficult because he doesn't get a lot of chance to show off his anticipation with these dope receivers he's got but we do see that he is laid on reads relatively frequently enough at the college level that we can assume he's not going to develop excellent anticipation at the highest of levels in the nfl this isn't necessarily a bad thing i mean a b on mid-tier accuracy is average starter caliber accuracy so if you look at his traits right here, you can see he's basically average or better in every facet. He's got, you know, a slightly above average arm in terms of physicality and finesse. He's got average accuracy to all of the zones or better. He's even a really good athlete. The issue lies totally in his brain, his ability to handle pressure or lack thereof, and his ability to process things when things are difficult later in the down. If you guys stuck around this long, I'd love to hear what you think. I have C.J. Stroud as my 22nd ranked quarterback prospect since 2015, right around guys like Mac Jones and Jacoby Brissett. I think that he could be a solid game manager, and in the right system, I think that he could have a really successful starting career. Much like a guy like Andy Dalton, Jared Goff, or my comp for him, Teddy Bridgewater. He's in luck, too, because the team with the first overall pick is the Carolina Panthers, headed by Frank Reich and his quick-hitting West Coast offense that relies a lot on a quarterback making good pre-snap reads, which is one of the strengths of Stroud's game. I believe pretty strongly that the Panthers are drafting him first overall, and I also think that he's in good... And I also think that he's in luck because I think that he's a great fit for that system particularly. In fact, before they traded up, I was hoping that he would fall to them somehow because that's the way that he's going to be most successful. Diagnosing defenses before the snap, getting the ball out quickly, and never really needing to deal with pressure because he gets that ball out so quickly. Never really needing to make second reaction decisions and never being forced to panic because that part of the game will just not really be heavily featured in that offense. Again, I think that his ceiling is like a less aggressive Joe Burrow, and I think that even that is a little bit optimistic because one thing that Joe Burrow certainly has going for him, even by my standards, and I remember I'm not the, his biggest fan, is that he's very aggressive and he knows when to take shots and how to give his playmakers a chance. Where I don't think C.J. Stroud has that yet, I think that he's a little bit more cowardly, fading away, afraid to get hit consistently, never standing through throws. I could do an entire video, and in fact I did, on how C.J. Stroud is legitimately afraid to get hit and loves fading away from pressure throwing off his back foot. But enough of that, you've watched plenty of film and you've heard plenty of diagnosis. I want to hear what you guys think in the comments, and I want you guys to call me out if this uh, projection doesn't hit. If he ends up being a superstar, let me know. Let me hear it. But... If CJ Stroud ends up being a game manager and a little bit overwhelming or uh, underwhelming for a first overall pick, you guys better be back here. Until then, I'll be grinding more film. Asta.